And now, the Alan Brady Show. Hi, I'm Alan Brady. You remember me from the Alan Brady Show? Yes, if Alan needs any help. Shut up, Mel. Yes, sir. Shut up, Mel. Shut up, Mel. Yes, sir. I have the best TV writers on my show. Rob Petrie. <laughs> Sally Rogers. Hey, I got it. Don't anybody move. And Buddy Sorrell. Well, well, now you moved. I forgot it. On the Dick Van Dyke Show here. Alan, if you're... Shut up, Mel. On Me TV. Weeknights at 9.30, 8.30 Central on Me TV. What's the matter with you? Hello, I'm John Malos, and welcome to a special edition of Connect With Me here on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6. Today, we're going to be talking about ATG, the Armenian Technology Group, and we have two guests in the studio. We're going to be talking about Armenia and the farmers there and the new technology now on hand. We're back with more of our program in just a moment. Stay tuned. You might recall not long ago on this program, we had uh, Varjan Dursimonian on as a guest uh, talking about the relief effort, of course, in Armenia. He is the head of the ATG group, that's the Armenian Technology Group. Now, that is a nonprofit organization that was designed and developed some 24 years ago after the earthquake took place in Armenia to help the farmers become independent of everyone with the latest in technology, with the latest in equipment and the latest in farm knowledge. Let's go to the videotape and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You know, when you have an earthquake the size of what they had in Armenia some 24, 25 years ago, it was 7.0 on the Richter scale. This is not uncommon in a third world country. It happens all of the time. So when you see devastation like this, what you're seeing in that video, the problem is, is now the food chain is totally contaminated. You have contaminated water you have contaminated food. Nothing is sanitary. And so you have a problem with infectious diseases. And that problem is very difficult to eradicate, very difficult to pinpoint and to find on occasion. And so what has happened in the last few years is the latest in technology to try to help those farmers over there. I mean, they have helped the farmers in more ways than one. They have helped them with the no-till planting. They've helped them with seed multiplication. Now they are helping them to try to detect the infectious diseases. I want to put a picture up on the screen and show you what I'm talking about. You are going to be looking at, in a moment here, the portable lab. This is a lab that was designed to detect those infectious diseases on the spot. Diseases like malaria, TB, and other transmittable diseases. Live in our studio right now is Dr. James Reynolds and Varjan Dersimonian, a return guest here on Connect With Me. We're going to be talking about that portable lab and the latest developments to help those farmers in Armenia, but not only in Armenia, in other parts of the world. The third world countries that are really hit hard by earthquakes or tornadoes or whatever that disaster might be, maybe a tsunami, it contaminates the land, the water, and so now it's difficult to farm. Well, Dr. Reynolds and uh, Varjan are here now to explain what this portable lab does and how it helps farmers, not only in Armenia, but around the world, detect those diseases, and then they try to eradicate them, the diseases that go from animals to plants. We're back with more of our program in just a moment. Stay tuned. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. 
We've seen it happen time and time again. How about the earthquake in Haiti? What about that disaster down there? You talk about infectious diseases and contaminated water, contaminated food. It can happen anywhere in the world. It can happen in this country. So my guests today are Dr. James Reynolds and Varjan Dursimonian. You're a return guest there, Varjan. You've been here a couple of times. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So let's talk about this lab now. We touched on it just briefly when you were here a while back and we didn't really dive into the details about what the lab does and what it's all about. Let's start with you, Dr. Reynolds. What is the sole purpose of this lab and how does it work? <clears throat> this lab was designed many years ago to uh, bring basic uh, diagnostic ability to uh, developing countries, third world and second world countries, for human diseases. Sort of the barefoot doctor kind of an idea. And the person who um, developed this lab and has been successful with it, I think they've sold 800 or more of these uh, across the world, has decided to um, bring it into the veterinary world. Uh, okay. I'm a doctor of veterinary medicine and, and uh, with some public health training. So what's your association with this lab, basically? So I've been asked to see what capabilities it could have in, a, in the veterinary world to uh, diagnose animal diseases, particularly livestock and far on farms. That can be transmitted to humans? Partly. Um, that's part of the answer. What it, <clears throat> of course, the zoonotic diseases, the ones that are transmitted from animals to people, <clears throat> are very important for human medicine. But what, we, what we've been doing with, uh, with ATG in Armenia, and what I've done in other countries, is to try to help and develop the food production, the economics of the farming area. Right. So, so in order to to develop the country as a whole, all of the country has to go has to improve, including the farming sector, and and a large part of that is livestock production, as it is here in the Central Valley. Well, if this lab can help the farmers in Armenia or the farmers around the world uh, detect some of these diseases, can it help in the veterinary world? Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do: is go there. <laughs> We've done quite a bit of work over the years. Is it pretty years. much the same technology it's and that you use the same techniques? It's the same thing. as We've just taken the human lab, the, the portable lab that was designed, and actually added a few things to make it useful for farms. We've added an incubator and some other tests that we can do to, to see, find some diseases within farm animals and, and dogs and cats in the villages. I want to put a picture up on the screen of the portable lab again so people can look at it and uh, we can talk about what this lab is doing to help the farmers in Armenia specifically, Varjan. Sure. Uh, of course, right now we are in the process of completely developing this one. In the next two months, Dr. Reynolds will test this unit down in Southern California to make sure it works properly. And later on, most possibly sometime in April, we'll take it to Armenia to start training the local veterinarians and also start It's not on site now in Armenia? Not yet. Not it's yet. When no. will it be? Most possibly in April of 2013. And how will you transport it there? Uh, Dr. Reynolds with two students from uh, Western University will be traveling there most possibly end of March or early April to take it with them. Let's change the photo. We'll put up the components of the lab too and you can explain what we're looking at there maybe Dr. Reynolds as you look that at the various components of that portable lab. What are we looking at specifically? Um, there, it's, uh, it, and this, this lab is designed to do what uh, uh, standard human or veterinary lab here in the United States would do. So, and, and also it's got uh, different energy sources or power sources. So it has a battery, it has a solar power, it has backup things for, for developing countries that don't have constant power. But it has a microscope so we can do uh, blood work, we can do white blood cell counts, we can look for parasites in tissues and in other things. We, we can uh, culture things, we'll have an incubator. We can culture bacteria to see what kind of bacteria cause diseases, mastitis in the cows and the milk, to make sure the milk is safe for people and the cows are healthy. We can culture bacteria from different diseases like pneumonia. Um, we can spin blood. We can uh, look, we, we can do some chemistries, look for liver disease, kidney disease, all the things that we would normally do in a small animal hospital here or or a human. Uh, this does it in the field. This will do it in the field. On the spot. On the spot. So when you do blood work, do you have the uh, the results immediately? Yes. So you do. Do it right there. Yes. We right there. We don't have and to wait for the report. So when you find out, let's say that's that uh, uh, an area or an animal is disease ridden and could transfer that to a human, what do you do about it? How do you how do you eradicate it? That's a little more complicated, but um, what first the first thing with this lab is to go and see what kind of diseases they have on the farms 
and within the animals within the villages and, and uh, small towns. And uh, hopefully we can uh, c expand this project a bit and, and include public health. We've, we've worked with public health before in Armenia, and we, and so, but our first thing is to validate it with the animal species because that's what I do and what we do with, Armenia, with the Armenian Technology Group. And then we'll, we'll expand it. And this lab will, will uh, ATG is, owns this lab, has purchased it. We will take it there with... Um, There's only one students. that ATG will own, right, Varjan? Well, eventually we're going to increase it, but this yeah. is the beginning of it. This right. is the first one ever right now being developed for veterinary medicine anywhere. Once we develop and implement in Armenia, most possibly we'll increase the numbers, yes. Yeah. Now, will you teach uh, the people of Armenia how to operate this lab? They will independently know how to work it. Yes, that's the intent. Dr. Reynolds, will, the two students will go there for uh, two weeks and train them. Eventually, these students, are the, or veterinarians actually, in Armenia will be using it. And they will be in the field to get the data. If they have a question, they can send it to us. Dr. Reynolds can respond how to track the disease or how to address it. Uh, it will be on the spot. And Tell uh, us why this lab is important and, and, and why spend the money on a lab like this. If you only have one, how is that going to help such a vast region, a large region in Armenia? Okay. Again, this is the first lab to, in its size. Okay. Uh, we had originally designed to talk about the central diagnostic lab, which will take much, much more money, multi-million dollars, to set it up and then implement it and also manage it. With this lab, with the amount of the money we're talking about, about $24,000, it could do 80% of the work that the major central diagnostic lab was capable of doing it. Uh, once we implement the one of them, once we carry it, start practicing in the ground, then we can have the second one. It will take, let's say, between an hour to four hours from central Yerevan, from capital Yerevan to the regions of Armenia to travel with a portable mobile car or a van to take the lab someplace to test it right. and then bring it back. Eventually, once this is, gets developed, then we'll have a second and third one too also. Right, okay, we're going to talk more about the lab, but it's time to take a quick break here on Connect With Me on Comcast. We are talking with Dr. James Reynolds and Varjan Dursimonian about that portable lab that detects infectious diseases and can do it around the world, not only in Armenia, where they had that big earthquake about 24, 25 years ago, you might recall. We're going to continue our conversation here, a very important topic, in just a moment. <laughs> Now on when I sneeze, I'll try to sneeze more friendly. <laughs> Talking about natural disasters that take place around the world, and apparently this portable lab is uh, very useful in the field. You don't have to take uh, you don't have to take samples and then fly them someplace and test them. This lab can do it on the spot right there. And let me ask you, if if one now, yeah, you know, I'm just going to focus on our Armenia just just for a moment, and because that's you know ATG helps the farmers there. Okay, you have a vast region in Armenia. Armenia is a small country. I realize that. So what do you do? You take this lab to an area, a farming area, and then you do the testing, and then you pick it up, put it in the car drive to another area? If you need to, yes. The, the, after the testing, the information should be sent to the, their central lab. As Dr. Reynolds knows, we have right. a central lab in Armenia, as anywhere in the world. Uh, the data will go there, and they will analyze and see how they can um, address it. Then if there's a need for some other location, but the lab can move on to other location. But driving it from location to location to location yes. could take hours, could take days. It could. Uh, that's why this is the first testing, and eventually we'd like to have more than one on the ground. Well, the idea, John, is to <coughs> take this lab, which, which is a, 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 a not completely proven idea that, that we can make it useful, and <coughs> take it to Armenia, and then um, diagnose diseases that are important to, for each farm. Much as, it'll be much the same as a veterinarian here does. Right. Armenia lacks, um, uh, has private veterinarians, but it's from the old Soviet system. So it's more of a central mindset or central control kind of an idea. So what, when we were there, what we found was we could go to farms, we could see people, we could see their animals, their dogs and cats and, and cattle and sheep, but we couldn't get accurate diagnostics that would help the farm today with the diseases they had this today or this week. So what this will do was make, so our idea is to go to a farming area, uh, work with the private veterinarians there because there are some in each of the villages, 
help them learn how to use this and the diagnostic capabilities, show them w how to use it, what to, to do with it, and, and more, most importantly, how to use the results right. to, to help the farm improve the health of the animals and the so welfare. So you don't have any doubts that the lab is going to work? No, the lab will work because all the parts are the same as we do here. Right. The, 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 the problem that I see is taking it from farm well, to we're, farm we're, we're, we're to not, farm, which you just mentioned, Hopefully, you'll get more of these labs. So once once we develop the concept and, and show the value of it, then then it'll expand and, and each region would would get one. What each area? What does one lab cost? We figured about twenty four thousand okay. dollars, including training. Okay, including the training, yes. and that comes from ATG. From here, from the Dr. Reynolds himself and other uh, individuals that we're going to travel there. The training yeah. is. Uh, well, I'll be doing the training with students from Western University College of Veterinary Medicine. And the uh, money for the for the project comes from donations to ATG. I see. So and we, we have about we're about halfway there. We have enough. We bought the lab. We bought a unit which is being put together right now, and then we'll we'll utilize that and learn how to use it in Southern California on uh, sheep and goat herds. And so how California. long will that take? That process that, that should take two or three months to to learn how to use it, see what the capabilities are, see what other things we might need for it. And then once on the ground in Armenia, I don't know how long that's going to take, but how long will the learning process on the ground in Armenia take? It should take about two weeks, no more than that. I mean, okay. they, are, they are veterinarians there. They know, they have the information. The key is how to use the equipment. It, there's a learning curve. Exactly, yes. Obviously. Okay. How bad is the problem in Armenia? You know, more than, what, a quarter of a century, almost a quarter of a century later after the earthquake and all these diseases are running rampant through obviously a third world country with the earthquake, how bad is it now? There's a quite improvement in it actually. There's okay. a lot of improvement, but what we're focusing on this issue is to address the diagnosis of the uh, infectious diseases. That's where we need the information. But how bad right is the problem now? Is it more, a little more under control? It is under control. Quite so a lot. The, yes. the rural area, the farming area, uh, it lags behind economically and, and so the uh, capital city, Irvan, has done quite well. That's where the foreign money comes in to be funneled out. Yeah, I want to but take a look at a piece of video here of the countryside of Armenia and we can continue talking about some of the problems that exist there. Uh, the farmers, of course, have received help. They're yes. becoming more and more independent uh, with seed multiplication and, right. and other aspects of farming. We're looking at the countryside right now. So you're saying the problem still exists, but not as bad as it was 25 years ago. Correct. Uh, what we're looking at in the video, John, is when about five or six years ago when Dr. Renel, myself, and one of our volunteer board members, Bache, we were raising funds for the uh, portable uh, milk tanks okay. to also station in various parts of the country. And we'll get into that in later okay. in the show, but go ahead. Yes, and then uh, the idea was, of course, connecting the, the, uh, the milk tanks with the diagnostic capabilities of the diagnostic labs uh, we're going to set up right there. The portable lab that's going we're going to talk right now, it will be fairly close to where the milk collecting tanks are. I this see. way, if there are any kind of diseases we can track coming from any specific s small farm, we can track the source of the disease immediately. And a lot of the, these diseases are coming from dairy farms, uh, dairy obviously. Way. Yes, yes, Goes from the saying. countries. Right, right. Uh, most of them, some of them are come from the bordering countries, like uh, Georgia or Turkey, for example. North, right. Northeastern part of Armenia is so close to the borders between Turkey and Georgia that there are a lot of animals go back and forth. Yeah, so you're now. saying crossing the border is yes. a problem. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's very normal. Yeah. All right. We're talking with Dr. James Reynolds and Varjan Dursamonian here about some of the problems that are taking place uh, in Armenia still to this day, years later after that earthquake. But some of those problems are starting to diminish thanks to the help from AT. G. That's the Armenian Technology Group. We're back with more of our show in just a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency Cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool Cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place.
of course, the problems of fighting off infectious diseases, especially uh, when a natural disaster happens, is a major problem, not only in Armenia, but around the country. We've seen it happen countless times with earthquakes and tsunamis. Look what happened in Japan just a year or so ago uh, with that tsunami that happened there, and then the Haiti earthquake and uh, the earthquake that happened in Armenia. and other parts of the world and it's it's you know the, the the humanitarian help coming from the United States and other countries sometimes just is not enough and it can't come fast enough when a disaster hits and you know what it could happen in this country too we're not immune to it so from the ATG group uh, is uh, that's the Armenian Technology Group is uh, Barjan Dersimonian and Dr. James Reynolds and let's talk about the the countryside in Armenia of course was hard hit by the earthquake. All of Armenia was. It was a big earthquake. Now it's starting to diminish some of the problems thanks to the hel your help. Now your organization, ATG, has raised what, about $60 million to help some of these farmers in the last quarter century? Correct. It was, of course, total of uh, in cash and uh, in kind contribution and donations. Most right. Of them Federal grants, right? Absolutely. Yes. U.S. government grants and par private contributions. Right. All right. Let's talk about some of the milk tanks. That's different than the portable lab. The portable lab is there to detect some of the infectious diseases. We're going to go to the uh, milk tanks now. We're going to put up a picture up on the screen and talk a little bit about what we're looking at here. Varjan, why don't you start this off? That was that's part of the diagnostic labs. What we did, of course, okay. we raised money. This was five, six years ago to station four uh, milk tanks, uh, refrigerated milk, milk tanks in Armenia. Uh, the, the idea was to private small farmers can bring their surplus milk and store it in this cold storage facilities. Uh, and we have stationed them in four different locations. About 3,300 families now can benefit from it. Um, so uh, the portable labs, uh, portable, I'm sorry, the, the milk tanks, uh, when they bring the milk over there, now that's an opportunity for us to try to see if any of those milk that we're receiving has any kind of an illness in there. And that's where the portable lab comes into play? Yes. Okay. That's yes. part of it. Okay. What's the other part? Well, these both are projects um, that, are, that are examples of uh, essentially person-to-person -person or farmer-to-farmer -farmer contact. So the milk uh, tanks were a very important aspect of uh, helping the farmers in Armenia because Previous to uh, ATG and, and people donating money to ATG and putting the tanks there, the farmers couldn't really sell their milk. They had to milk them and they milked them, put them in the cans and put them on the road, and then the cans of milk would be warmed and uh, bacteria would incubate. So, so these are refrigerated tanks, like we have here, small ones, um, and and it keeps the milk cold so it keeps the bacteria level down. And then what we found on the farms. That what we need to do, another thing we need to do with the farmers is to go there and be able to diagnose diseases right on the farm that affect the health of the farm animals, the productivity, and the uh, health, uh, safety of the, f of the milk and the different food products. So we'll, one of the parts of the project is we'll go to these places where the tanks are, we'll sample the milk tanks repeatedly over time and see... With the lab. With their lab because it has the capability to do everything we need to for that. And then we will work with the cows and the, and the veterinarians and the farmers who in that village. We'll go to the next village and we'll, we'll demonstrate the, well, first we'll find out what diseases there are because there's not that information in Armenia. We have that information here for our farms, but, but we don't in Armenia. And that really hinders the ability of farmers to progress and to, to improve their productivity and, and serve their family and their community. And I would imagine that uh, the diseases uh, are running rampant or can have the ability to run rampant, especially in a dairy farm. Well, what we saw previously, we've been there a lot of times. We've, we've been going since 1991, really, mm -hmm. from, to Armenia. And what we saw are, are very common diseases have a very large effects on the farm animals and the communities around them. And one of the aspects which you mentioned is the fact that milk can spoil very rapidly right. if it's not refrigerated. Yes. And that's, that's where this milk tank comes and in. And that's where the milk tank comes in. And then this is another component to that project. We can determine the, the safety of the milk itself with, with the lab, the portable lab. Um, I, I was there once and, and saw cows dying during delivery, during ca calving from nutritional deficiencies, from starvation and nutritional deficiencies. We didn't have the ability to d diagnose the specific problems with the cows. Now, now with this, now lab, you we, do. We will see. Now you and do. Then, and then we can advise through their veterinarians right. how to feed the cows correctly so they don't get sick, they don't die, and they can keep producing. 
Varjan, let's put up a map. We'll take a look at that and a uh, specific map as to where some of these milk tanks have actually been delivered. When that map comes up, you can describe uh, what we're looking at there. And there it is right there. Uh, that's the uh, one of the fundraising route we did. You see those red stops that each city is in, starting from Yerevan to Echmiadzin up to Gumri to Lori region uh, and back to Sevan and back to Yerevan. And uh, you'll see it pretty soon right now, the location where we located the milk tanks. Uh, one is in Alakad's Odon region. Uh, the other one is in Lori region. Uh, second one in Shirag region. And a fourth in uh, Gegharkonik regions. Those are very rural areas, quite a f kind of far away from Yerevan. It takes about between three to five, six hours to drive. So the milk tanks are stationed there right now. Uh, that's where the villagers bring their milk, a surplus milk, to store it and sell it to uh, wholesaler later on. Uh, stage the, uh, the portable lab will be close to those locations. Of course, they could be moved back and forth, and that's where we can track the diseases if it's necessary. Uh, that's pretty much the map what you're seeing where the milk tanks are. If need to, if there's a need for more milk tanks, we can probably bring more also. And the milk tanks are funded by ATG? We did do this fundraising here in the United States okay. uh, through bikatons and through private donations, and we purchased an actual here from Visalia. What, the they, what do they cost? Us. Uh, anywhere between five to eight thousand dollars each. Now it's much more expensive. Right, yes. and they're currently over in Armenia now. They are, yes. That's How many? The picture. We're at four of them right now. Okay. Uh, two five thousand plus uh, gallons each. Right, and how much has that helped? It's quite a lot. We've got at least thirty three hundred families are benefiting from it. It's year round. It's not only one time. It just goes on because see what we're trying to do is maximize the farmer's income. They have the milk, they can use it for a cheese and butter or uh, yogurt right. or whatever they want to, but right. there's always a surplus. So by selling the surplus to the wholesaler, they have additional income. That's the, one of the benefits of the portable labs. I mean, what the other things might you be concerned about uh, after the disaster that took place in Armenia right now? What's your major concern uh, besides these infectious diseases uh, that could present a major problem? It's a sufficiency of the people, the farmers, to be able to provide to their families. Eventually, that's what our goal is, to make them self-sufficient, uh, be able to provide to their families. And every project that we do has economic perspective to it. This might seem like uh, a question that might be inappropriate, but why has it taken so long, and why does it take so long? The earthquake happened 25 years ago. We've tried a few different versions of these ideas, um, but we, what ATG started doing was um, uh, getting grant, the grants were from the USDA and USAID to, to rebuild the farming sector through the crop production. So ATG over the years has been responsible for 70% of the wheat grown in Armenia. I see. And, and so the American government wanted to stabilize Armenia after the Soviet Union collapsed, when the economy completely collapsed. And that took and that, quite that some was, time. That was right after the earthquake. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's taken time, and, and that has been completed. ATG has completed that. That has all been privatized at this point. So the wheat farmers are doing well. Um, we have tried to uh, work with the diagnostic laboratory system in Armenia. Remember, they have a veterinary service and a diagnostic lab. It is still a bit of the old Soviet Right. You type mentioned thing. that earlier. And, yeah. and, and, it, and it's centralized. And, and, and we, of course, in the United States are more familiar with localized needs and diagnostics and helping farmers directly um, without um, uh, oversight from the central lab. So, so we've tried to go through to improve, increase, and improve the capacities of the central lab in, our, in Yerevan. That didn't work. That was just simply too large a project, too expensive, and too difficult. So, so now we're coming at it from a different approach because we have the opportunity. Uh, Dr. Ralph Plum, who made this portable lab for human medicine, and I connected through a, a mutual friend, and, and he wanted to convert this to a veterinary lab. And, and I said, well, we have exactly the place to do it in Armenia because that's exactly what we want to do. We don't. We want to go right to the farm and do what, what I do as a veterinarian here in California on the farms in Armenia. And that's what this gives us. Th th so that's why it's taken so long. It's, it's, it's been a very uh, long but uh, useful project. So. Right.
Well, I appreciate both you gentlemen being here, Dr. James Reynolds and Varjan Dursimoni. And sadly, the time goes very quickly, and I think we covered all the bases about what's going on. We have a little background, of course, about ATG. We've done that in the past, and the farmers seem to be progressing anyway, right? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. When you go to the countryside, you'll be amazed the uh, positive response that we receive from the farmers. Right. Yes. All right, Dr. James Reynolds, Varjan Dursimoni, and come back thank again. You. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Varjan. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. That's going to be our show for today here on Connect With Me on Comcast and Channel, uh, channel 43.6. That is going to do it. We'll see you next time on Connect With Me. Like me? Just like me. Like Me TV Fresno on Facebook. Get the latest news, interact with others, watch videos, become a fan of me. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV.